Uh, uh, good afternoon. Um, I'll, I'll be speaking more or less to the same uh, uh, context that uh, has been uh, uh, shared by the representative from uh, ECAS. And uh, I come from IGAD. Uh, just to introduce IGAD, is, uh, uh, it's one of the regional economic communities of uh, AU. It has seven members, eight member states. And it was established in uh, 1986 uh, with the objective of addressing drought and national uh, dis uh, natural disasters. Uh, but then, with the with the issues that were changing in the region in 1996, then uh, um, it was revitalized specifically to address issues of peace and security. Uh, IGAD has uh, four broad um, uh, programmatic areas: uh, agriculture and environment, economic cooperation, and regional integration. Um, a, a social development and peace and security. Um, IGAD's peace and security uh, strategy, which runs until 2020, uh, has two main uh, strategic thrusts. One is focusing on, um, um, on uh, conflict prevention as opposed to intervention that had characterized most of the activities in IGAD region. And then the other one on uh, norm implementation. There was a realization that there's a lot of uh, uh, normative frameworks, the protocols, et cetera, that were put in place. But the challenge there was in the implementation. So these are two key areas that IGAD is uh, peace and security strategy is trying to, uh, to focus on. Other than... Uh, uh, and, and of course, C1, uh, IGAD's Conflict Early Warning and Response Mechanism that uh, I, I manage uh, is one of the key uh, uh, programs or uh, offices of uh, IGAD's Peace and Security. Other, other than these, there are also others uh, dealing with the preventive diplomacy and mediation, transnational threats and uh, uh, cross-border crimes, good governance and democracy. Allow me to just highlight some of the key challenges that uh, peace and security issues that the region is uh, grappling with. One has to do with political or governance related uh, uh, or called governance deficit issues. We are, for example, we are having issues that are not yet resolved on the, on the Sudan, South Sudan, uh, the issues of CPA, what remains there. The conflict that is ongoing in South, in, in South Sudan, and the Somali conflict, but also there are other simmering issues uh, in, uh, for example, in, in other member states of uh, IGED. The other one is border dispute, and we have uh, uh, key border uh, problems for Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Eritrea, South Sudan, and Sudan. And of course, there are also other smaller ones, Kenya and Ethiopia, I mean Kenya and, 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 and Somalia, and uh, uh, South Sudan and Kenya. This the aspect of localized conflicts. Uh, this is mainly with the discovery of uh, natural resources, and some of these are areas that were once neglected in the peripheries, but now they are becoming the center of attention. Uh, the issue of terrorism and, and violent extremism is another thing that the region is grappling with, and we have uh, active uh, uh, groups uh, dealing with this. Uh, ex environmental extremes uh, with attendant uh, migrations and destabilization the movements of people. And then there are also spillover effects, uh, given the proximity of the region to, to, to say, the, the Middle East and also the, to the north uh, of Africa, you know, the crisis that were there. Um, uh, let me then transit and say some of the progress and challenges that uh, IGAD's conflict early warning and response mechanism has been going, uh, 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 has been happening. Uh, I had uh, a few cases to highlight uh, what there has been the operating context of, uh, of, of C1. But just to say that uh, between 2002, when uh, IGAD C1 was established, we've been actively operating in the, uh, in the border areas. We have three clusters, one that we call Karamoja cluster that for, uh, brings together four countries, South Sudan, Kenya, uh, U uh, Uganda, and Ethiopia. And then uh, we have what we're calling Somali cluster, which bring Ethiopia, Kenya, and, uh, and, 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 and Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya, and then Dekel, which is Djibouti and uh, Ethiopia. But mostly what we were dealing with there were issues of pastoral uh, conflicts 
And so from 2002 all the way up to 2012, this has been the focus uh, of, of our attention. So the, most of the early warning that we're doing were aimed at addressing this cross-border, lower-level uh, issues, if you wish. But now with the, with the changes that are taking place, I've highlighted the, the security and peace and security challenges, uh, uh, IGAD C1 had to rediscover itself. And one of the things that, that we did was to uh, uh, review our strategy um, so that we are able to align our interventions with the, these uh, regional realities. Uh, so the mandate of IGAD's conflict early warning has been to supplement the, the, the complement the active uh, uh, the work of the member states as far as the regional conflict uh, issues are concerned. And to do this, uh, IGAD established uh, an early warning system that uh, we call it bottom up because basically it has the, the, the data collectors that are situated within the communities. And then this system, uh, when the information is collected, then it's uh, shared at uh, the national level. Uh, an analysis is done by what we're calling the national research institutions. And then it is taken into the Committee of Permanent Secretaries, and from the Committee of Permanent Secretaries, then it finds its way into IGAD Council of Ministers. And there, then, the decisions are made. Uh, then, uh, in order to anchor ourselves to be able to address the issues of, uh, of, 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 of these higher, higher uh, issues other than the, 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 the pastoral issues, then uh, we had to reorganize the, the system. And therefore, we are currently collecting uh, uh, early warning data in across uh, five thematic areas uh, on issues of governance, uh, issues of uh, environment, issues of uh, uh, security, uh, issues of uh, uh, economics. Uh, but we have retained the bottom-up approach with having the field monitors. The only change that is happening there is that instead of using individuals that we were formerly using in the clusters, now we are using the civil society organizations to be able to help us with this data collection. We have also increased the number of uh, national research institutions from one per country to five in each country, basically each specializing in one of the five sectors that I mentioned. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the challenges that uh, we've experienced uh, as, as, as the regional uh, mechanism for, uh, for conflict resolution is uh, the, the, the disconnect, and this has been spoken to by many uh, presenters since yesterday, the disconnect between uh, the early warning and early response. Uh, occasionally, I mean, most of the time you generate early warning and then it's uh, presented for decision. So sometimes no action is taken. Sometimes the action is slower or uh, is not the, the, the relevant kind of action. And so we find ourselves uh, oscillating between uh, information that is supposed to initiate action, which is not being acted on. Uh, there is also a, degree of, uh, a varying degree of commitment uh, between uh, our national uh, conflict early warning units and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, across the region, and this affects uh, the extent to which we are able to move together as a, as a, as a region. Uh, I've also mentioned the question of the emerging conflicts and, and some of the systems that we had in place before were not uh, adequately prepared to be able to deal with uh, these uh, emerging conflict issues. Uh, in terms of uh, the relationship with the AU, as has been said, uh, there's an MOU that exists between uh, uh, AU and, and Rex, and uh, that MOU uh, allows IGAD uh, to have a more structured relationship with uh, with with AU. And uh, in terms of principle, we we work on uh, complementarity and subsidiarity. And for example, some of us who have followed this uh, uh, the ongoing conflict in uh, in South Sudan and of course also Somalia. IGAD has been playing an, uh, a lead role in uh, resolution of these conflicts, of course, with cooperation uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, AU. And the complementary uh, approaches that are also being taken, the initiatives that are being taken, are also ongoing from AU. For example, the, uh, when we're dealing with the issues of uh, justice, that was purely taken by AU. Then there's also the panel, uh, the high-level panel, which was taken by AU. But over and above, the lead role in terms of uh, relationship between AU and IGAD, IGAD has been taking lead in this uh, uh, conflict, in resolving these conflicts. Uh, 
Then there is also, we do joint missions. So for example, in the Kenyan election in 2013, we had a joint uh, uh, mission with AU and uh, COMESA and uh, East African uh, community. And uh, specifically on conflict early warning, which is one of the, the, the mechanisms that were mentioned under peace and security architecture. Uh, and uh, that is where now my, my responsibility is, is that we engage with the, uh, with the AU's uh, continental early warning system. Uh, we do through that uh, arrangement, we share information, we, share the, we develop and share early warning tools, uh, we do capacity building of each other, and then we do joint exercises. For example, like uh, the, the, when there are issues, we can uh, do an analysis together with AU, and then we issue, we, 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 we get the report, and then we share it uh, with the decision makers in our different uh, bureaucracies. Uh, how the how the member states uh, relate with each other with this uh, the relationship between member states in addressing the conflict in the in the region uh, both multilaterally and also bilaterally uh, for example the member states cooperate on issues of early warning and early response uh, the member states are cooperating on issues of mediation uh, through the summits and for example like in uh, the summits have been very regular if you would say so a nigger region given uh, the nature of uh, the conflict that we are dealing with. So most of the time you'll hear extraordinary summits taking place. Uh, there are also the meetings of Council of Ministers. Then we also have the special envoys that are involved in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, paying close attention to some of these conflicts. Then uh, IGAD is also playing lead role in uh, contributing to the troops uh, that are being used to stabilize uh, most of the conflicts in the region. Uh, Towards, uh, the, to just to conclude, uh, some of the promises that these uh, bilateral and multilateral engagements have, uh, uh, um, or we see the, the, the promises of this kind of engagement among the member states. One is the, we start with the transformation of IGAD uh, from solely focusing on issues of uh, uh, um, drought into issues, uh, broader issues, including peace and security. Uh, then the fact that uh, they are member states are able, of course, in, 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 in our case, in IGAD, uh, unlike other, other recs, we don't have uh, a standby force. Uh, the one that is existing is uh, existing in isolation of IGAD uh, uh, structure. We have East African standby post, force, which is uh, existing on its own, but the member states themselves are contributing into these uh, uh, forces. Uh, then uh, the region is also embracing democratic uh, constitutional reforms and empowerment of communities. Uh, for example, these are uh, conversations and processes uh, in, uh, aimed at uh, uh, decentralizing uh, the power and the resources uh, to the people across the region. And then uh, there's also emerging cross-border integrated programs uh, at the cluster level. Like I mentioned, we have three clusters, but now these have been scaled up to, uh, to eight. But there are also uh, bilateral arrangements uh, that uh, are being appreciated across the region. So this is uh, the reflection that I had uh, uh, about IGED. Uh, thank you. We'll take uh, questions. <laughs>